I'm really happy to welcome to the show David Roberts, CEO of The Filter, a UK-based recommendation engine. Uh, hi, David, and uh, thanks for coming on the show. You're very welcome. Hello. Uh, well, first of all, what is The Filter? Well, The Filter is a recommendation and relevance engine for digital entertainment content, so music, movies, web video, etc. It, it basically finds the most relevant content that somebody's wanting to consume and uh, we do that on uh, music sites, uh, video sites, uh, DVD rental sites. Yeah, and uh, the company was uh, created by Peter Gabriel and uh, Martin Hopkins back in 2004. And uh, since then, you've uh, made huge leaps in the recommendation technology. And uh, you've been CEO at the Filter since 2007. Uh, I was wondering, looking back uh, at the history of the company, what do you think are uh, the most important milestones that spurred its development? Well, um, it, there's several stages. The very first stage is um, they actually validated the power of the technology by building music playlists. You know, way before Apple Genius was around, it was doing um, that sort of technology, using technology to build great music playlists. So that was actually getting that done and out as a consumer a piece of technology was yeah. the first major milestone. And I think after that, um, we, you know, one of the, the next milestones was probably getting Nokia. Um, to use the technology on their music store. Sure. Um, that, that was the first B2B deal we ever did. So that was pretty major. Um, and I think that the, the final point was actually a leap into video. Um, and we've been working with uh, Daily Motion now for over a year. We only announced the deal, I think, a few weeks ago, but actually we've been working with them for ages. Okay. And, and be, being able to use the technology for web video, you know, for a library of 100 million videos was a massive milestone for us. Sure. And the music recommendation services are absolutely vital in today's increasingly all-you-can-eat subscription models because consumers are kind of confused as to what they should listen to. And if they're presented with a blank page, they don't really know what to do, what to uh, find. Uh, but still, it seems strange that a company like Spotify, for example, didn't launch with a full-blown recommendation service from the beginning. And it's not just Spotify. I mean, there are many other services that are lagging behind in this area. Uh, why, why do you think that often the creation of a recommendation infrastructure comes as, as an afterthought for many companies? Well, there's probably two main reasons. The first is these sort of companies focus first on um, the content itself and, and how they might deliver that and the deals they have to do, in this case um, with Spotify, the deals they have to do with the record labels yeah. to deliver that. So they focus on you know, the UI and they focused on the deals and that takes up, you know, 99.9% .9 of their time. Uh, so that's one of the reasons. And, and, and I think it's a problem across all media companies. They focus first on, um, on the supply of content rather than the demand for it. So that's a big change. But the second reason is people think it's easy. Um, and they think, oh, we'll do it later. You know, recommendations easy. And, and, and it's not. It's, it, you know, it's proven again and again that, um, you know, whether you're Netflix, whether you're Google, whether you're YouTube, whatever, it is really hard to get quality personalization um, in place. And it takes many, many years to be able to do that. And the, the bulk of your business uh, at the moment is uh, in B2B licensing of your technology for use by clients such as uh, Nokia, as we mentioned earlier, and uh, Sony Music, for example. Uh, but you started out as a B2C service and uh, you still... Uh, have that uh, embedded within the filter. Uh, how do you separate uh, these two units and how do you go about developing them? Well, the, the, the B2C side of it, so our website and our downloadable um, playlist generator and things like we do, we have a little iPhone app called Bandstalker. All of those things are showcases for the B2B part of the business. So okay. we don't actually separate them. We do have um, some people when they have some spare time, some engineers, they would develop um, new features on, uh, on the B2C side of things, but they're very much there to show what we can do. Um, you know, 95% of the teams uh, and the time is focused on licensing. And the data is at the core of the filters experience, naturally. Uh, and your services, more than just providing great recommendations to your clients, uh, also uh, are complemented with an extensive set of metrics and analytics that help your clients uh, gauge the impact that you have on their business. Um, how did you go about uh, building the infrastructure to um, provide this sort of data? Well, the good thing is to provide recommendations, really deep recommendations, you have to capture uh, an awful lot of 
data, very, very granular level of detail of data around the content. So we were already capturing all of this data anyway to feed the recommendation engine. Um, so we didn't, have, we didn't have to build anything s separate for the analytics. What we did have to do is start understanding what information was important and start showing it in dashboards um, to, to customers. And when, when we realized it was important was um, when people started realizing that, that from Omniture or, or other existing um, packages, they could not get that level of detail um, that we could provide um, about the content. So, so we then started providing it, and it's now becoming a, most, you know, big, a bigger and bigger uh, part and feature to what we offer. We actually call, you know, we've got two services. We've got software as a service, and we have data as a service yeah. uh, because it's becoming huge for us. And uh, although you started with a focus on music, you mentioned before that uh, you also create a movie and uh, web video recommendations. Uh, is music still the bulk of your business uh, or are online video and movie rental businesses becoming an increasingly important part of your client base? Well, it's definitely increasingly important, the video and movie rental. Um, in terms of volume, so the amount of recommendation calls we put out every month, um, I'd say 75% of them are now in video. Yeah. Um, in terms of revenue, though, we're probably still um, 60% of our revenue is probably coming from music. So the volume and the revenue are not necessarily, um, you know, they're not connected. Yeah. And uh, your client base spans from organizations such as the video distributor Daily Motion, which is uh, pretty huge, uh, um, going all the way to small startups like Evolver.net. Uh, how do you deal with working with uh, businesses that have such uh, varied requirements in terms of both type of recommendation and the scaling of it? Well, we have, we have a very easy um, start point for recommendations. So we could actually set up quite small businesses without costing much money or time. So it's a very easy start point. But what tends to happen with bigger businesses is that they have many more uh, requirements, bespoke requirements of how we adapt our recommendation model for them. So that's when we actually get much more involved with the teams, um, how, how we integrate the APIs. And so it's, it's, a fairly, it's fairly straightforward because the, the core technology is, is actually quite simple to in, integrate in any system. So we can work with very small businesses all the way up to, you know, to the Daily Motions and Nokias and Sonys of this world. And the filter is based in Bath, um, which is a city that is not widely known for its uh, tech community. Uh, so did you find it harder to develop the company from there? Or would you say that uh, today location has minimal impact on businesses that operate mainly online? Well, the good thing about Bath is it's 10 miles away from Bristol. And uh, Bristol has got a very strong um, tech community. In fact, there's a lot of digital agencies in Bristol um, and there's quite a lot of um, technical resources and creative people there that you can access to build up a company in Bath. And because it's only 10 minutes on the train, it's quite easy. Yeah. Having said that, it is not, it's not San Francisco. And it's, uh, you know, it, you, you do have to work quite hard to find the right people um, to come and join you. Um, but it's a great place to live. And you can, once you get attract people, they love, they love living here and they love working here. And uh, you'll be one of the speakers at the Sounds Digital event hosted by the Music Void and X Media Labs in London uh, between the 16th and the 18th of April. Uh, what will be the focus of your keynote there? So my keynote's all going to be about um, how to make content more relevant to an individual based on their taste, based on their location, based on the time of day, based on the device that they're on. So I'm going to explore what is important in making things more relevant to an individual when it comes to music. And uh, talking about the Sounds Digital event, um, you will also be taking part in the labs uh, sessions as a, as a mentor. So what are you planning to bring to the table to help these new digital projects get off the ground? Well, uh, I, I guess my, in my background, I've been lucky enough to be, um, to be involved with very large media companies. So I, was, I, I ran all of Future Publishing's um, web operations for several years. Uh, I yeah. set up a lot of magazines, international operations. So I, I come to the table with that experience. But actually, what's even more relevant is the last three years at The Filter, where we've gone from uh, a B2C um, model and, and strategy and changing that to one 
which makes a lot more money and is a lot more successful. Yeah. So I can, I can, I can talk to what, how you need to be flexible, where you need to understand the strength of your technology and your people and how you can be flexible to deliver a, a, a better business model and a sounder um, return on investment for, for the people that are involved. Well, wow, that's fantastic. Well, thanks very much for joining me on the show and uh, look forward to meeting you at Sounds Digital.